Welcome. Today we're going to show how you can use AI Builder 3.0 to uh, import a uh, training set of data. In this case, we're going to use breast cancer, uh, a diagnostic data set, uh, to determine uh, malignancy versus uh, benign um, nature of various biopsies related to breast cancer. Um, and we are using UCI's machine learning repository of sample data sets. Uh, we've downloaded uh, the data and we've downloaded the associated, uh, well, several associated images of these uh, uh, biopsies for fine needle aspiration of um, uh, breast tissue. And, uh, and we've brought in the data, the data set and we actually have, uh, I believe, 661 uh, patient samples of um, nine different attributes, measured observable attributes of these images and where the outcome and the final diagnosis, the correct diagnosis uh, was um, uh, based on the original findings from the, the medical doctors that performed these, uh, either malignant or benign. And so what we're doing is we're loading this data in along with the classification into a neural network that is custom designed for this uh, classification. And, uh, and then we're using that to build an application uh, that's as simple as this. And while we wouldn't use this uh, particular thing in a medical set, uh, setting, uh, there's a number of uh, qualifiers and things that have to go into it. We certainly can build a, an artificial neural network, load that data in, train the network, embed that network into a runtime, and then build an application around it. And we've done that in a total of about three hours today. And, uh, and that includes downloading the data. And what this uh, simple application does here uh, is it has the uh, AI Builder runtime underneath along with the trained neural network. And we can just go through and as a doctor or a, uh, a pathologist may uh, do is uh, establish the observable or the observed settings for each of these nine different um, values. That's clump thickness, uniformity of cell size, and that's as referred to in these images here. Um, you know, uniformity of cell shape, uh, marginal adhesion, and while I don't know the detail and certainly have no background in medical evaluation of these types of tissue, um, I can bring in their data and uh, we can establish this neural network to achieve the same results. Uh, single epithelial cell size, uh, bare nuclei, nuclei, bland chromatin, normal nucleoli, and mitoses. And so, as you can see from patient 63375, which is the sample number, uh, here was the uh, feature vector or set of observed uh, uh, values for each of these different attributes for clump thickness, use, uh, uniformity of cell size, cell shape, marginal adhesion, etc. So we've just simply taken these in as columns of data. And with that measured observed value for each of these uh, values, we achieve a class and we use that to train the neural network. So let's just see if we can put that in. We'll just, uh, for this particular one, we're gonna say this is gonna be nine, uh, this is one, uh, let's see, we go one, and then here we have two and six and four and 10 and seven and seven and two. So we go seven, seven, and two, and the class is likely malignant. And that is in fact what this original finding was. And so the idea here is that you can use this, if we, if we really computed the number of permutations of this particular data set, you'd have uh, 10 to the ninth power of possible permutations. And so the idea is that um, we can use the neural, the neural network to generalize and give us some sense of potential classification for values and, and potential sets of data that uh, have not yet been seen. And so you can see that we can vary these values and we should get some differences as we start to manipulate these. I think we've got some high values down here. And we can see that this has an impact, uh, the bland chromatin at about five to six 
uh, when these other settings are the way they are. But then if we reduce clump thickness, uh, we have an impact on that. And so you have this uh, n-dimensional decision-making plane that is generalized through an artificial neural network. And uh, this is a simple dialogue-based MFC application <clears throat> that we've created that just takes these values every time you change a value. Uh, we're simply sending all nine data values into the neural network and having it compute the outcome. You can see it's pretty fast uh, in terms of its uh, final computation. So every time we make a change, it sends all data elements into the neural network and computes the classification of malignant or benign. And so, um, and that's as simple as that. This is the end application with an integrated AI system that is simply an artificial neural network that has been trained with this set of 661 classifications of patient data. And, uh, and so now, in the next segment, what we'll do is we will, um, we're going to go into AI Builder. We're going to import this data and we're going to create this from scratch, just as I've done already in the last several hours. All right, and we'll take a break and uh, load AI Builder. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to launch AI Builder, and we're going to build this system, which is essentially a neural network that will be trained with this diagnostic data from these 661 patients. And we will then export that and bring it into an application that we'll create uh, that will load this data in and give us the classification that we're looking for. Here's AI Builder, and uh, let's go ahead and um, I'm going to close this pane. And this is what you'll see when you launch AI Builder. Let's double click and add a system module. Uh, and let's double click that system module to go in and add some components. Let's not worry about system inputs and outputs at this time. Let's let the neural network do all the work for us. So let's double click on the module. Let's go to the Decision Logic Components palette of the components, or 95, that you can choose from. We only need a neural network in this case. Um, and what we'll do is we just get a basic neural network component on the screen. It says no inputs and no outputs yet. Right-click to import vectors, and that's what we need to do. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to import that sample data set with those 661 uh, patient uh, samples. So what we'll do is we're going to select Import Patterns and the data import wizard pops up. We're going to click on browse. We're going to choose cancerdata.csv. Gives us a sneak peek a preview of this CSV file with the sample number, clump thickness, uh, uniformity of cell size, et cetera, et cetera, and just a short sample of this data. And that's, in fact, what we're looking for. Uh, we can also get a little picture of the data uh, structure as we uh, uh, lay it out in this wizard. Header information, uh, we do have a header. Uh, and it's feature names, and it's highlighting that for us. So we're going to go next, and now it's asking us what's in this first column, uh, and we know that it's not the names of profiles or classes. That's at the end of the data set. It's the names of the feature vectors themselves. And it's notice, notice as I change this, this structure over here begins to represent what, we, what that data file actually is structured as. So this is a little visual representation. We'll click Next. And now it says finish your data sets ready, and we'll click finish. And now notice the shape change on the neural network component. It's no longer just a square with no inputs and outputs. It's actually auto-configured for all nine attributes and the two classifications, benign and malignant. And the data set that we imported, remember, was just the CSV file with the nine columns of data, the attributes, the sample number, and the classification. And so now, what we want to do is we want to show the feature vectors. Let's go into, I think we choose, uh, let's see, right here in Show Vectors pane in the Modify Neural Network pane. And so here are all our imported feature vectors. And there are 660 of those. Uh, and notice that it shows actual output and target output. So the actual output was the final column or the classification in that data set. Uh, what the target output is, is um, uh, the actual output is a computed output. The target output is the classification in the data set. And so we can just arrow down to all of these, and we can see we've got some blue, line, blue uh, background here. What that signifies is that this actually, the actual output as computed with these values, you can see when I click on this, the values are set is, in fact, the target output. So we, we, we are computing a malignancy. 
we are actually wanting to compute a malignancy on this training sample here. Remember, this is all training data. And so we get a blue uh, light and we get the blue background on that train set. And we can see that uh, out of the total vectors of 660 feature vectors uh, in this data set, uh, there are 61 that are already where we need them to be. And that's just an FYI. What we need to do is we need to train this. And so what we're simply going to do is uh, in the Modified Neural Network panel, we can choose Start Learning Here or Learn Here. It really doesn't matter. I'm just going to go ahead and start learning. Uh, it depends uh, how long this might take. That was about four seconds, so it's pretty quick. Uh, this network is now tuned. It tells us there are 15 processors in there, one middle layer, and um, uh, we're done. And so we can actually arrow through these, and you can see that as I arrow through each of these feature vectors, the uh, inputs are changed to reflect that particular value. So, and the computation is made. We, made, we can see that the benign value is 0.82, and it's from 0 to 1. Uh, and the malignancy is 0 0.740. Uh, and, so, and we can change this to reflect zeros and ones. Uh, if we go into properties, we can say show zeros and ones. So benign is the winner. Uh, malignancy is not. Uh, but in any case, we're just simply going with the higher value. Uh, and... Um, and so we can arrow through this. I'm just going to use my arrow key and arrow down. And you can see the values change as I arrow down. And so we can test this. Um, and this has to be done, this kind of uh, click and set auto setting of these values to see what the result is. Uh, and of course, you can see it here as well, the actual output. Um, uh, it has to be done before you connect these to the outputs of the system itself. So what we want to do now is expose these inputs and outputs. This is trained. Uh, no need to simulate or anything like that. We just simply do a right click on here and rather than double click and add outputs and add system inputs and all of that, what we're going to do is just do a right click and say uh, for the inputs, let's just expose all those automatically. And so we've got them automatically uh, connected to the sidewall and we do the same thing for the outputs and the benign and malignancy is there. Now if we go outside this module now that it's connected internally, we can see that here we are. There are all the different settings. Uh, and you can change this by saying show values. You can see the values as we connect these. Or we can just show the actual name of that. And then we do the same thing we just did internally to the sidewalls or the actual system inputs, system inputs, outputs of the system. Do a right click, select, we do a right click on this module itself. And then inputs, we expose all externally. And we don't need to create a new category, we just say no, and there they all are. And so these are now exposed to the outside world. Let's do the same thing for the outputs. Outputs, expose all externally, there we are. They're exposed to the outside world. We are done with this project. We have a trained neural network with 661 classifications. And we now have exposed that uh, uh, component, neural network component, to the inner wall, so to speak, of the uh, system module. And we have then exposed that system module to the externals, uh, the inputs and outputs of the actual system. So now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to export this. Well, first of all, let's save this. Uh, we just do a file, save as, and we're going to give this cancer diagnosis AIB3. And we're just going to replace that. So now we can load it automatically. Uh, but we, what we need to do before we build our project is we need to export this system so that we can import it into our own application to utilize this neural network and pass in these values in real time uh, and, or at the, uh, in an application. Uh, so let's go ahead and select um, Home, the Home tab, and then Export Runtime System. And uh, we'll get a dialog box that pops us to ask us what the name for that runtime system is. And it's a T3R, and that's Tin Man 3 runtime. And we've already got one here. We'll go ahead and write over it. And we save. Uh, it says it already exists. We'll go ahead and say uh, yes. And what happens now is that's exported. Uh, it says that we have a successful runtime file export. And the information is below. And it gives you some other information about the process. But it tells us what the runtime file is, cancerdiagnosis.t3r. And we also have a manifest file, which creates a lot of really valuable, helpful things as we build our project. I'm going to go ahead and select view the manifest file. And this runtime file is what we include in our, our application, 
that we're embedding intelligence into. Here's the manifest file, and what that does is simply gives you uh, helpful information. It tells you what your exported runtime file is, the project file name, uh, project description. Now, we didn't give a description. We could have if we went into project info here in the application. And then it tells us about the system inputs, and there are nine, as we know. There are nine system inputs. And then it gives us the name and the ID. Clump thickness uh, is right here, and that's ID 4295. We can see that's right here. And we didn't provide a description. We could have if we did a double click on this and add a description. Uh, and that would have helped us if we needed to, if we had a larger, uh, let's say, export file. But we also are given some really convenient things here. Here are the system input constants with IDs for copy and paste into your header file. So for our application that we're going to build, we can just simply copy and paste these. It just uh, prepends input underscore to the name, the original name of that uh, system input, and then it associates that ID. Because when we set this value at runtime, in our application, we're going to need to know what variable we're setting with what value. And then we get the system outputs. There are two, benign and malignancy. And then uh, they are also uh, given uh, convenient output underscore uh, names with associated IDs. You can see 15275 is 15275 here. And we need those when we build our application. And we'll do that in the next segment of this video. Okay, uh, so now we're using Visual Studio 2013, and what we're going to do is just create a dialog, a simple dialog-based application that allows us to set all nine of those attributes. And uh, we're, it's going to be nice and helpful when we load our manifest file um, that we created when we exported the cancerdiagnosis.t3r file. So simply, um, we want to do a file, add, and then we choose new project, and we choose an MFC application. Uh, we're going to select a dia dialogue-based uh, application. We don't need security, development, lifecycle checks, and we'll just do static library. And we'll choose next, and then we'll go on and just leave it as a dialogue-based application. I've already done all of this. I'm just going to show you my application. So once the application is created, and I call mine, uh, it's actually just loosely called Tumor1. And um, uh, what we're going to do in the application, the main, uh, is we're going to include the AIB3 runtime header file. That's just the first, the only thing we do. And then in the uh, init instance uh, main member function of that application, which is automatically created for you by uh, Microsoft Find Out Foundation Class Library, we're going to just do an include, the cancerdiagnosis.t3r, and uh, we're going to uh, call a simple API uh, of TM, that's Tin Man, AI system load, give it the name, and give it an ID for the system, and leave this last parameter null, which is essentially uh, a return uh, structure that can give you additional information. We don't need to set that today. Uh, but TM AI system load, that just simply loads this file and loads your neural network. Uh, everything else here is automatically created for you in uh, 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 Microsoft's Foundation Class Library for a dialogue-based application. Uh, and so let's go back to this main page here. I'm just going to do a right-click on this AIB, and I'm going to open it up so you can see it. This is all automatically provided for you. Uh, here are your APIs that you can uh, call for the um, Tin Man runtime. And again, you use the runtime when you've created your own intelligent system like we've just created for diagnostics. Uh, and you use that when you create your application and you want to embed that knowledge, that intelligent system, into your application. Uh, and you can see here's that API call we're, we're calling, TMAI system load. Uh, once we've loaded it, what we're going to do is we're going to set the values of the individual variables. And then we're going to call a system execute function. That's this one here. And then we're simply going to get the system output values. And so we'll call this function here. Everything else we don't need today. That's just four function calls. And so let's go into our dialog-based uh, application. Go into our resource, uh, resource menu. Here is the dialog. I just added uh, nine slider controls and set their values from uh, 0 to 10. I have an associated uh, edit box to kind of mirror the value. 
and then I have a static control that just tells me what I'm setting here. And uh, everything else is automatically managed. So if I uh, go into this dialog box here, and I go to the uh, on H scroll, which is horizontal scroll for the dialog, uh, every time I scroll any one of those elements, um, what I want to do is I want to get the value of the slider. I want to show it in the edit box. And uh, that's right here, set window text box. You can see here's the slider three, slider four, slider five, all the way to slider nine. And, um, and you can see what I'm doing is I'm calling, after I get the value of that slider, uh, which is a value from zero to 10, I then use this AI, uh, uh, AI builder uh, API, Timman AI system set value. Uh, to set this individual defined statement. This is the ID of that system input. And remember, this was provided for us in our manifest file. And I just copied and pasted these at the top of this page in our uh, dialog-based application. So when I set the clump thickness input, I just do a right click on this, I copy this, and I'll set this ID, let's go down here, right here. So when I call this API, set system value, I use that ID because that's what it needs. You can see this as integer ID input for that second parameter. Uh, the ID of the AI system was one, we set that when we loaded it. And then here's the value. And then I do the same thing for all nine others. And you can see these defines uh, resolve to their value, 5583 for marginal adhesion, uh, 16960 for cell size, et cetera, et cetera. So once all these values are set, and we set them every single time that we call execute, uh, we call the system execute function. And that's still within this horizontal scroll function call. And, uh, and then after execute, we know that our output values have been set. And so let's go get them. And that's get system output value for output benign or output malignant. Uh, in both of those, and they take a pointer to a, a floating pointer, a double value. It gives us the value, and then what we do is I've just got a drawing function here that uh, I'm, I'm drawing the top part of this dialog box right in this right corner uh, with the outcome. And so I get the client rect, and then I calculate a, a reduced rectangle over to the right in the upper quadrant there. And I say if the result for benign is greater than the result for the malignant, then I just want to fill the solid rack, give it green, and say tumor class is likely benign. Otherwise, make it a little bit red and say likely malignant, and then release the DC. That is it. So let's run this application, and uh, let's see what we have. Here it is. And now we can get rid of all this mess behind us and just focus on this. And so here we are, and I'm just going to slide that slider. So we're calling H scroll, and uh, you can see that when all of these values are four, the feature vector is four zero 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 zero. Uh, we get a likely classification for benign. And if I set this all the way to ten, you can see that uh, we get a little bit of a change here when we have four ten zero zero zero. So this is how we are um, using our uh, neural network. Each time that we move one of these scrolls, uh, we're actually in the code, we are calling H scroll, that's a normal uh, Windows message inside that dialog box when we use any one of these uh, scroll bars. And uh, again, all we're doing is we're, set, we're getting the value of the slider, we're setting the appropriate system input value. Once all nine are set, we call system execute, and that computes and calls that neural network with those values and gets the outputs. And then we use those to paint the result. And that is our application. Uh, what we're doing is we're loading the Tin Man runtime. We have a library underneath this thing. If I go into properties, uh, you can see that in our linker settings, our input is the AIB3 runtime.lib. And you get that when you get the AI Builder application. And then you just make sure that the AI Builder, AIB3 runtime.dll is in the same directory as your application. Uh, and then in the C++, I think that uh, there is a, a portion here where we are uh, providing the runtime.h file, uh, or at least showing the directory for where those runtime uh, header files are, uh, my Tin Man projects. 
And uh, that is it. Uh, we have just created a diagnostic, a medical diagnostic application using 661 uh, data set, uh, trained data uh, feature vectors from UCI's machine learning repository. And uh, we have also, uh, see if I can bring up the page with the images, give us a sense of uh, some of the uh, images that were being uh, observed by medical professionals and where those nine attributes were being set uh, on the, uh, the imagery. And then we've got our uh, sample data as well. Uh, AI Builder is available. Uh, we have it in, um, uh, you can, we'll make this project available if you request it, if you send an email to support at tinmansystems.com. We'll send you the full project with the runtime file and the project file. And um, if I can just launch AI Builder here, we'll get that going. And uh, we'll load this data file up, and I'll show you how quick it is to modify this. And this is one of the things that we can deliver to you if you request it. Uh, it's cancerdiagnosis.aib3, and there it is. Uh, remember, this was our neural network that was trained. And notice when I load that project, all of those feature vectors are brought back up. And, um, and we'll talk more in a later video on how you can actually modify that neural network, make it stronger, make it more... Uh, uh, accurate. You can add separation. You can um, do various other things to uh, unlearn rate, uh, loser output, target winner output, and max separation. And that's it for today. Thank you very much.